Wow! I missed the damn subscription from four months from POF four month subscription. Thanks for resubscribing to the cool stream. Oh, oh heck. Where's my freaking coffee? Damn it. Whoa! Haven't been here in so long. Welcome back. Let's get some clapping going. Whoa. We're back. We did it. Everybody's here. It's too busy. <laughs> I know. It's using the restroom and posting at the same time. All right, now I have to go get my coffee, so... <laughs> Just let this music play a little bit, and I'll be back for a sec. And don't even, don't even talk to me about doing a stream until I've had my coffee. Ah, gotta have it. Love it. topic, but is this a horny stream? No. Okay, I don't really have any cool sounds on this one. The guy was just talking. Alright, we'll go back to this video. Though. I'd like to do a little um, pre-stream. What? Oh my god. Oh my god. Jay Chiz. Welcome back to the cool stream. Subscribing. Can't keep up with all these subscriptions. Who's did it when and how long it's been or whatever. Doesn't matter, but thanks for coming back. Resubscribing. Four. Two months in a row. <laughs> you know, when Turbo was on <clears throat> a couple weeks ago. When was that? Last week? A week ago? Last Friday. It wasn't a horny stream <laughs> by any means, but it was a. I did say some swear words. What? I gotta put some in the swear jar. Oh crap. <clears throat> For that. I'm not anti swearing on the stream, but you know. So cool. It says a lot in the attic. Ah! Here's an interesting YouTube. <laughs> The Beach House, oh my god. 27 million views on this video. We found a real treasure chest. Most epic treasure hunt ever. Cool stream, yeah. What Turbo is on, he's really on. That's right, it's cool stream time. It's back by a reg regularly scheduled time oh, slot here. That's so weird. I saw that and I was like, okay, we have to film this. We are no ready idea. to be back. This is an interesting video. Of the forgotten treasure. <gasps> this one? might be from Ryan. From Ryan? Yeah, because he's playing on a treasure hunt. Oh, what? interesting. I don't. You got a fake no, treasure map here. Because it's been there a long time. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, who's Ryan? I don't know. Hey, but this video, 27 million views. Can you believe that? Maybe we'll add this to our sh our show we're going to do at some point of these crazy YouTubers. Some of the stuff out there that gets these views. Oh my god, never even heard of half of it. Like this thing. No, it is it's really dusty. It's been there for a long It's really time. dusty. Maybe a hundred years. <laughs> really? Yeah. Read it. 
says, beware the secrets of the It's been there for a hundred years. And then it says, a lock oh. in the attic. This, this is, is for kids. It's just for kids. What? One bit. Thank you for the bit. Ah! Just trying to get the number one spot. I see what you did there. And hey, you know, people subscribing and doing all that kind of stuff. What's cool, and this is kind of cool, is your name is going to show up in our credits. I don't know if anyone noticed that. It's part of the show. You donate and stuff. I wanted to figure out a way where you could get... Ah, get some more bits. <laughs> We got a bit fight. I ain't complaining. All right, so we got our um, classic eight-minute intro. <laughs> wow. Two more bits. Here we go. Let's get these bits going. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> this is fun. We're having fun today, everybody. It's a Saturday. <laughs> It's a Saturday. I hope everyone did their damn chores. <laughs> hope everyone did their chores. I still have more chores to do. Uh, because... Ah! What the heck? F this. It's the cool stream. Oh, oh, oh. I'm doing the show again, I, and I hope you're here and you're ready to watch. I'm trying not to get distracted by all this stuff. No chores today? That's good. I did one of the craziest chores that you could ever do. <laughs> Thanks for the bits, Midwestern Thug, Rurisk, and all the bit lords. Sorry! I'm trying to do the intro. <laughs> it's not how it's supposed to go. But it's fun. We're having fun here on the cool stream. Thanks, Midwestern Thug, for the bits. 100 here. We have 200 there. Thanks for Rurisk. Because everyone's here and there watching the mother freaking cool stream, everybody. We're back, baby. That's right. Whoa! It's a Saturday afternoon, and we're ready to do some crazy streaming. Yes, it's been too long since we did a fun little stream. So we're ready to do it again. Bum, 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 bum. Wow. Yeah. And people are throwing bits around, and no more bits until the intro is complete. Oh, crap. That's coming from the mod, Pop Deluxe. I wasn't going to try to, you know, step in. I am not complaining over here. You throwing some bits? That all goes in old Beowulf's billfold. Throw some bits into Beowulf's billfold. Maybe I should put a over in the corner instead of a bit cup, have a billfold. That'd be kind of cool. Wow. Okay, chiz. A hundred more bits? Oh my god. Midsummer. And that's a movie that's coming out. I'd love to go see that movie, but instead I'm here doing a stream for everybody. I'm excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. Pretty cool. <laughs> Cause it's the mother freaking cool stream! Yeah, and it's hot as hell outside! Oh, so get inside, get indoors, and get cool! Cause it's time for the cool stream. It's too freaking hot outside! Bum, bum, bum. It's gonna be a lot of fun on the show today! Bum, 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 bum. Whoa! Y'all are getting me juiced and jazzed up over here? The chat is blowing up! What's going on over here? Risk. Cool. He's trying to take money out of your baby's mouth. What the heck is going on? I can't can't pay attention to all this stuff. You guys sort it out. <laughs> Merciful. Okay. Bow, 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 bow. Whoa. Alright, let's jump on over. Let's do it. Oh yeah. Today we're talking about treasure, folks. And I'm gonna jump over here. Hell, we'll just pull, have this article up. Why not? I guess everything that ha Okay. Don't give any damn uh, spoilers. Someone did that for one of those Marvel movies. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Remember that? Um, whoa. Okay. My gosh. A lot going on. Chat is going wild. Thanks for all the bits, everybody. We got... Here's our leaderboard. Let's see if we can, but you can see it down here. We got Rurisk at 107, and here I'm just stoking the flames for some more donations. We got, oh, Midwestern Thug jumped to the number one spot, 155, and we got some more stuff. Uh, jumped to the top, Poff threw some in there. <laughs> Can't do all these. Manderson, wow. We got 100, 
Got 106 from Jay Chiz. Pop Deluxe and Beer Horse coming up. Coming up short in the rear. Beer in the rear with three bits. <laughs> Calling your ass out. <clears throat> nice. Watching the cool stream from in a pool. Oh my god, that sounds awesome. Guys, this is a lot of fun. We did a lot of streaming this week. We were on the Turbo stream on Wednesday. And then our friend, the, um, what's his name? Mr. Rude Guy. He did a stream playing some N64 games. N64 on whatever that was, on Monday or Tuesday, one of those days. It's kind of cool. He might be back someday. He said that he, had, he scored big on some more games. Like, he only had one game. If you remember, he went to the Goodwill, got a Nintendo 64 there, and had it all hooked up to my TV and that, because I wouldn't let him download games, all right? You don't want this guy on your computer downloading on Steam and all this stuff. <laughs> and uh, But he said he scored big, and he got some more games. He was excited about that, so he'll be back at some point. Now, this week we're doing a show. Next week, we've actually done something quite impressive i'm impressed with myself if i must say that i did re pre-record a stream that will be that is scheduled to play at its normal time four o'clock central on saturday so i won't be here won't be live but it will be broadcasting so you can watch the show that i pre-recorded it's kind of fun what is happening yes mr rude guy did great and midwestern thug is freaking out thanks for all those donations y'all means a lot to have you here watching the show all my friends and my fans and the cool heads the cool crew is coming out full force today and that's good because we have a good show we have a great show planned let's just get right into it today folks we're talking about treasure hunting i thought we'd do some kind of chill acoustic music for that this seems appropriate so Treasure hunting. We're going to get into all kinds of crazy stuff with this. There's just so much to get into, but I've, I went down went down the wormhole, as they say. Wow. Some more bits from someone. I didn't catch that. Wow. Risk. Thanks for the bits. Here we go. <laughs> we love our pog champ, don't we, folks? You gotta love him. So I went down the wormhole here. Found an interesting treasure story, something I hadn't heard of before. But it was suggested to me when I was doing some searching on the web. And you love when their your browser thing, whatever it's called, Pocket, you guys use that? It's, it's when it sends you a recommended story and you're like, damn, this is cool. So anyway, this is about a treasure chest hidden. Okay, <laughs> quiet down in there. Beer words, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> browser thing. Uh, this is an interesting story about a guy named Forrest Finn, and he hid a treasure chest worth millions in the Rockies. And, and if, if you thought that was insane, people have died looking for it. I don't know if they needed to put that in the title, but it does kind of make you wonder, like, what the heck is going on? He's, he wrote a little poem in his memoir, and that serves as a clue to the treasure's location. And there he's pointing to a map... There's more to learn about our food, okay? Let's call this guy Mr. Food. He's got all these foods. I don't know what that's about. Where is Mr. Food? I haven't heard from him. Oh, it's so good. There he is. Look at this guy. It's Forrest Finn. He's an old guy. And what's cool is that I read this whole damn article, and I can give my synopsis of it, which is that he's an old guy. He's 80 years old. He owned an art gallery or something. The premise is quite simple. Wealthy art dealer decided to hide a number of his collectibles in a small chest within the Rocky Mountains, with the intention to unbury it when its value has inflated to ten million. We're gonna find some treasure today. He claims that all the potential treasure hunters need to find is find his loot is basic geographical knowledge, a map, a poem he wrote comprised of nine clues within his self-published memoir, The Thrill of the Chase. And it seems like that he was just trying to sell his book. He was like putting this story about treasure in it. It seems legit, I'm not sure. We'll have to figure out what you all think, but the hunt is so attractive, the treasure is 
worth up to $5 million at present and has inspired an influx of adventure seekers to the Rockies to search for it. In search of it. His background, he was, uh, he was in the Air Force. He was a troop. Then he got a bunch of artifacts somehow. And he had a, a gallery in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And that's where our friend, near where our friend Big Jim lives. He said he's heard of this. He owns some artifacts at this gallery. We're going to solve the puzzle. That's right. Well, uh, I was going to read the poem, but I had a, a video of someone else reading it, which is always good. He had a huge art collection, this guy. Forrest Finn. And he, um, well, he got cancer. Which is sad. You hate to see that. He thought his life was coming to an end, so he purchased a lockbox. And we're not talking about Al Gore here. Big Jim. Well, Big Jim's busy. He did a stream today, but I did give him a heads up. He did plug my show on his stream, which is always good. Of course, lives in the Big Jim Nation. That's right. So he purchased a lockbox, and inside the lockbox, I don't remember what... Al Gore said was going to be in the lockbox, but anyway, <laughs> maybe that's what he was talking about. He filled it with valuable artifacts, including a copy of his autobiography, so you can have that. You just have a book in there, along with supposedly lots of gold and diamonds and artifacts and all kinds of stuff. He's a friend of the pod. That's right, Big Jim, friend of the pod. But what happened was, old Forrest, he beat the cancer, which is great. But he left his vault out there, his damn treasure chest. Love a good lockbox. What's in the box? <clears throat> What's in the box? Here it is. So we decided to launch the treasure chest thing and tell everyone about it. Receives a lot of emails. Here's what's in the box. Contents weighs upwards of 40 pounds. Inside are a number of gold coins, gold nuggets the size of chicken eggs, pre-Columbian gold figures, emeralds, and diamonds. Oh my god. That's a lot of stuff. Where is the cool stream where we call? Well, hey, we got the best damn stream. Welcome to the cool stream. If you're watching for the first time, my friend, we uh, like to talk about weird and wild, cool, weird stuff on the web. Today we're talking about treasure hunting. Um, we don't do any call-ins normally, but welcome, and can please continue watching the show, and it's a lot of fun. We're talking about Forrest Finn, who buried treasure in the Rocky Mountains, so they're not quite sure what state it's in. They've narrowed down a couple states. I think there's a map here somewhere, but we've got to... Here's the poem. We're going to have this weird guy read it to us. <laughs> hey, Big Jib Fridge. <laughs> was that <laughs> wait a second what's going on it's big jim best damn stream he's asking to call in <laughs> this guy already knows our bits and our he's familiar with everything it's interesting so we're gonna have this here video is gonna read us the poem I couldn't quite do it justice as much as this guy this is geek seeks gold geek seeks gold Hello, my name is Leonard Apeltsen. I'm a data scientist living in the Bay He's a Area. Freaking nerd. Wow. And for the past few months, I've been hunting. <laughs> it's Big <treasure>. Jim's alt. <laughs> it's gotta be. Said, where do we call? <laughs> Geek seeks gold. All right, this guy's gonna read the poem to us. In 2010, an eccentric 80-year-old multimillionaire named Forrest Fenn hit a treasure he somewhere out there in the Rocky Mr. Mountains. Bean. <laughs> uh, the treasure is estimated to be worth at about three million. There's jewels and gemstones and a bunch of ancient bunch of gold stuff. hidden in this beautiful antique 15th century bronze treasure chest. Fenn encoded the location through that treasure chest in a single cryptic poem that he published We'll go through and break down the poem because you gotta... The thrill of the chase. So look at that book. Here it Begin is. It where warm waters halt. This is the poem. And take it in the canyon down. Not far, but too far to walk. Put in below the home of brown. From there, there's no place for the meek. The end is ever drawing nigh. Ah. There will be no paddle up your creek. Beaches nation. Just heavy loads and waters high. But if you're wise and found the blaze, look quickly down 
your quest to cease. <laughs> but camera. carry scant with marble gaze. <laughs> Spinning around. Just take the chest and go in peace. Wow. Oh my gosh. Did you catch all that? <laughs> I learned about Forrest Fenn and his treasure on the internet, as one does. I read about Fenn's story and the poem, and I thought, this is ridiculous. But then I read the poem a couple times, and I started thinking about it, and I go, okay, I got this, <laughs> you know. You know, I don't yeah. think it's that hard. I think I can crack it. Okay, you don't think it's that hard? We'll see. People have died looking for this stupid treasure. It's no joke, man. This stuff is crazy. Oh, what the hell? Swords, doors, swords. What the hell is going on? Can't work if Michael Bay shoot this. The poem is, well, it's not a very good poem. I'll say that much. So here are the clues here. Here's his memoir. I've gone alone. My treasure's bold. I can keep my secret where and hint of riches new and old. Doing a little A B A B rhyme. Begin it. So here's a clue. The clues are kind of bold here. I'd like to join the Rurisk and Big Jim treasure hunting team. Bring my natural charisma. Let's do it. Let's all team up. And we'll have Big Jim. We'll tell him to, where to go out in the Rockies. <laughs> and hey, go here. Check it out. Form a rival team. <laughs> Wait, you solved it? Oh my god. Knows where the treasure is. Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, here in bold, we've got begin it where water, where warm waters halt, and take it in the canyon down. So we're gonna go down in the canyon where the waters are cool, not far, but too far to walk. So it's not very far from some warm waters. Strap a GoPro on Big Jim. <laughs> so, and this part's kind of funny to me. Put in below the home of Brown. So, this guy is being a little funny here. He's got to go um, the home of Brown. What does he want us to to do? Go check in his toilet. <laughs> the home of Brown. The warm waters halt, and that's. I think he hid it in a toilet. You know. So you're, when the warm hits the cold in the in the toilet. Gosh, y'all are going wild in here. I'm trying to talk about treasure. Home of Brown is my toilet. That's right. It's no place for the meek. No, that's right. It's a scary, nasty place in, the, in your toilet. The end is ever drawing nigh. There'll be no paddle up your creek, just heavy loads. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here we go. Heavy loads, and the water is high when, when you flush it, and the water goes up, and then it goes down. I'll bring my gun. It's dangerous stuff out there in the Rockies. Big Jim can attest to that. Got all kinds of animals and stuff. It's scary out there. If you've been wise and found the blaze, and uh, let's see, if you find the blaze, I don't know, if you're going up to Colorado, you might find the blaze up there. <clears throat> Talking about weed. Uh, look quickly down, your quest to cease, but tarry scant with marvel gaze. Now, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> Talking about this toilet. It could also be your butt. That's right. Don't know what this part means, but Terry scant with Marvel gaze. So maybe that's a in a comic book shop or something. Marvel comic books. Just take the chest and go in peace. So why is it that I must go and leave my trove for all to seek? The answer is I already know. I've done it tired and now I'm weak. He's tired of crapping in the toilet. So hear me all and listen good. Your effort will be worth the cold. If you are brave and in the wood, I give you title to the gold. Terry Scant. Terry Scant, my good man. <sighs> Not really sure, but... Oh, here we go. Here's the mountain. So here we got... And this is... I mean, look at that. It stretches across multiple states. But this guy was from New Mexico, so I can't imagine him. He was 80 years old. Let's not forget, that's one of the reminders. I'd like to remind people that he was 80 years old, so I don't can't imagine this guy driving all the way up to Wyoming and go up to Canada and burying it up there. I don't think he's that nuts. <laughs> Terry Scant was taken off life support by the godless liberals. <laughs> 
Wyoming, Colorado. Where could it be? New Mexico? Seems right. There's rivers everywhere up in this piece. All the information you need to, to find the treasure is in the poem. The chapters in my book have very subtle hints, but are not deliberate, deliberately placed to aid the seeker. Good luck in the search. Forrest Finn. People are analyzing the poem all the damn time. They're breaking it down. We got a website, Chasing Finn's Treasure. Treasure was the friends we made along the way. Along the way. That's right. A lot of articles I've been reading about this and people who, you know, they never went out doors they never went went outdoors and camped and hiked and all that stuff and because of Finn's treasure they met people online they went out and hiked and learned how to survive and that's kind of cool so maybe the treasure is you know getting people out there <laughs> and also people dying from uh, you know I don't know going out too far in the woods should be pretty easy let's check out the treasure map Ah, oh, we got an interactive treasure map. Click on one of the graphics of the nine clues to see more. WW Warm Waters Halt. Let's see. That's the first clue. If you can't figure it out, you don't have anything. Pretty much cut and dry. The Warm Waters Halt. Hmm. People have figured it out. No one's going to tell you where it is. All right. I think the warm waters refers to a hot or warm water spring. Some other folks have said that his knowledge of warm waters comes from being a fisherman. So he knows a lot about some of these spots to find fish. You have figured it out. That's good. Don't tell me. I want to figure it out myself. Maybe if you did, we could, you know, split the cash, split the gold. I got a good sound effect for that. Let's see. Yeah, that's when you get the money. It's like the kids' menu. <laughs> Let's go back here, and you know we're gonna have to go to the home of Brown. <laughs> clue four. Put in below the home of Brown. Is this line a clue or a hint? Huh. Now what's the difference? What's the difference between a clue and a hint? Not really sure. So the clue will take you closer to the treasure and a hint will help you with the clue. Okay, so they just <laughs> explained that. The clue will take you closer to the treasure and a hint will help you to find the clue. Get a clue, damn it. I'm clueless right now. The words put in a verb phrase which definitely moves you closer to the treasure. Put in, and that's also like a, a canoeing term. You put in put your canoe into the river. I think he went down a river on the canoe or something. Who is Brown? He replied, if I told you that, if I told you that, you'd go straight to the treasure. So it seems Brown is a proper name. It is capitalized. He told another searcher, the home of Brown is an actual place. And it's not associated with a structure. So that's good. And a toilet, is that a structure? Technically, it's made of ceramic material. Structurally sound for your ass. Let's see. Refers to a person's name, but home of Brown cannot be a structure. Wow! Could it be a place on a map that used to be called Brown's Camp, but is no longer there? Who knows? Words in TTOTC. That must be the book. Thanks for following. What is that letter yeah! Thanks for what following Tinder Stems. Ain't that, that cool? What is that? What is that? the cool stream we're talking about Finn Forest Finn feature title 3 so <laughs> haven't quite finished there with their Squarespace website here the end is ever drawing nigh look quickly Terry Scant what's Terry Scant up to I've heard of Terry Gross but Terry Scant what does that mean to be continued alright so I haven't figured that clue out let's see did I I don't think I pulled up the Reddit, but there is a big Reddit thing, of course. Truth or consequences. There's a lot of people that think they have found it, 
Forest Fins Hunt. Here's an interesting forum that's all about it. This is how subtle forests hints are. I've heard of Forest Gump also. Just kind of make free associating things here. I thought I'd give you an example of how subtle forest hints are in his illustration in TTO TTOTC. Sounds like some freaking Scientology crap. <clears throat> Reached the bridge. I've ascended up the ladder to find the treasure. Uh, if you were to draw a line through the middle of this picture, it would go through the center of the X and the left side of the picture, indicating... What? Oh, these are illustrations in his book. Hmm. What the hell is this? I'm not sure what I'm looking at here. There's a jet, and what are these? UFOs? Or satellites? Or missiles or something? What the frick? John Brown was an American merchant. Hmm. Home of Brown. Okay, so it's in Providence, Rhode Island. We figured it out. <coughs> do not understand what this illustration, what they're talking about. Just showing the hint, not how to apply it, so enjoy the land of potato and pretty much nothing else. Oh, it proves the chest is in Idaho. Good to know. <coughs> There's another interesting post over here. The poem's evil twin. This is from Larsonist. There's a clue that nobody knows about. Well, most searchers kind of know about it, but they don't use it properly. <clears throat> it's clue number 10. It's the planet X of clues out there beyond Neptune and Pluto, beyond the nine clues. It's almost invisible without the aid of good telescopes and psychic magnifiers. <clears throat> what? Is the treasure in space? Think of clue number 10 as an aberration at the edge. It's peripheral floating image that your eye leaps to and it disappears when you look at it directly. Forrest likes his edges. What? This is crazy. I think he's making a little bit too much of a stupid clue. Forrest is a mastermind making these damn clues. Not just some weird old guy who wrote a shitty poem <laughs> and hid his millions of dollars. He's into edgy. <laughs> okay. Even though we call this rascal clue number 10. Number 10. <clears throat> Ten is not necessarily its position in the sequence of clues. The burden is on you to place it in the proper sequence, and of course you have to interpret its meaning correctly. But once the meaning and position are known, you'll be light years ahead of everyone else. No one talks about this evil twin or realizes its importance. These fools! How could you not know about clue number ten? It doesn't do anything overtly bad, it just screws up your solution when it's not included. Forrest uses it like a ninja warrior. <laughs> ah. bum, 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 bum. What? All right, Big Jim. Subscribing for two months. It's currently on a two-month streak. Thanks for resubscribing. That's me cashing in on all my bits. And subs and stuff. Thanks for the for resubscribing everybody. Thanks for watching my show. It's a lot of fun. So he's talking about clue number 10. This guy is just, I don't know what he's going on about. I have an idea, keyboard. Remove your posts right now. Do it. What? I'll give y'all a giant hint for free. X equals the home of Brown. Okay, that's already one of the clues, dude. So, And I really... <laughs> Took me a long time to figure out that the home of Brown had to do with the toilet. <clears throat> but I was really hoping the home of Brown.com was a real website, but it's not. That's his screen name there. The home of Brown.com. And maybe you don't want to Google that and see what pops up there. It could be something nasty. You don't know the home of Brown until you've solved the entire poem. X equals ten in Roman numerals, okay? The in the letters ending clue anagram to indulgence. The name of the chest. What? This guy's just doing some word anagrams to figure out these clues. Now that's a bit too far. Because you could probably go in here to this damn poem and you could make letters, you could take the letters, okay, and there's A, A, and that spells something B A N P. BAMP. That's probably something. F T T J, you know, take all the letters and scramble them up and 
That's that's too far for me. Oh my god. I think you just is everyone just assume that I'm gonna read all this stuff. <laughs> just having your own little side conversation there. That's cool. It's the cool lounge. Ow. <clears throat> We got a follow from Turnpike seventy four. Welcome to the cool grant cool gang. Bam. Bam equals map B. There we go. So there's a second map we gotta work on. Good lord. Excuse me. Alright. Where should the mystery clue go in the sequence? Look for the stuff on the edges, since what is unspoken can be just as important. The temperatures warm and cold are both in the poem, but not hot. Where should hot be placed? Starting putting together the pieces, folks. I can't compile the research all on my own. So, this is starting to sound like some QAnon crap. <laughs> Treasure chest is filled with a game or girl bathwater. <clears throat> Old man forest has bathwater. His brown water, probably. It's a bunch of doo doo. So, this is getting into some weird territory. Hot is absolutely in the poem. It's just not overtly spelled out for you, says Ra Ra. I know, I'm just telling people what and where to look. I'll even say where one is. Look in the line above warm. A synonym of new is hot. <laughs> Look in the line above warm. Okay. Uh, search for that. Warm waters halt. Right. Okay. Look for warm. There it is. A hint of new and old. Riches of new and old. Synonym for new is hot. All right. Makes perfect sense. All right. What are we talking about in here? Which was the bath water. Ew. Bath water, that's weird. But I would sell some if anyone wants my bath water. <laughs> you guys need to get a life. Oh boy. So there's a lot of weird stuff on this thing. Let's check out what other videos do I have on this. And then we'll jump to another, some other treasure stuff. This one's pretty good though. This geek seeking gold. <laughs> this is a freaking nerd up to. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't sleep. I would go to bed and suddenly an idea or a clue would pop up and I would get out of bed and I would scour maps and look online and think real hard. <laughs> and then I would finally get into think bed and hard. close my eyes and think about the poem till morning. I study the archives. I look up ancient hundred year old territories. I try to crack all the pieces, trying to crack everything together, analyzing maps, analyzing satellites. This dude images. is analyzing everything. This I think he's going to do it. He's going to find this treasure. Look at him. Analyzing stuff. He's going crazy over here. <laughs> he's cracking it. Close my eyes and think about the poem till morning. I study the archives. I look up ancient hundred-year-old blueprints <laughs> of territories. I try to crack all the pieces. Trying to crack all the to pieces. Crack everything together. <laughs> analyzing maps. Analyzing symbols. satellite Boom. imagery. I discover it. I see how the pieces all work. Let's explore the okay. clues in Forest Fence poem Let's one explore by it. one. Now, the first and the most important clue <laughs> is begin where the warm waters halt. Yes. I was. I remember after one sleepless night, I was rereading a line in the book where Forest Fen refers to an Indiana Jones type that will ah, find the treasure Indiana someday. Jones. And I thought to myself, Look at me. I'm no Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones <laughs> would look at random <laughs> reservoirs and random tributaries of rivers. Indiana Jones would get into a plane and fly someplace amazing. And that's <laughs> when it hit me. <laughs> Indiana Jones would get in a freaking plane and fly somewhere and get that damn treasure. Ow! Amaranth. What? Oh, come on. That's cool. Maybe she'll watch the show someday. I'm going to guess that was Beer Horse that did that. <laughs> so. do, 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 do. thought someone was going to give the best of stream. What was that guy's name? The best damn stream. 
Well, thanks for that. Thanks for the gift sub. Mmm. This is a good... This is good, this video. Watch this whole damn thing. I think all this guy needs, in my opinion, he needs one of the classic leather hat of Indiana Jones. That's really all you need. And a whip. Whoosh. Behind me are warm waters rising what? up as vapor over the bay, going up until they halt in the sky, oh, no. becoming soft oh, and fluffy no, clouds. That is where warm waters halt. The sky. The sky? And the sky is where we will begin. The treasures in the sky? What the hell? <laughs> that's... That's crazy. Forest Fen has always... All right, this dude is off his damn rocker, but this is a pretty good... It's in the damn clouds. Indiana Jones, that's a cool movie. This is a good video. <laughs> should just watch this whole thing. Maybe we'll come back to it. Oh boy, Forrest Finn and his famous treasure. But we still have more treasures to uncover on the cool stream. Okay, still, people are still talking about the bathwater. <clears throat> we got, uh, if you're in the chat, you know, you're just kind of, everyone's doing their own thing. But that's cool, and I hope you're still watching. It's out of stock. Okay, just not going to address any of this stuff anymore. Guys are going wild in there, but that's cool. It's Saturday. We're all jacked up. It's the weekend. Whoa! This person found the treasure on this tripod website, the Gates of Lador. And is this the home of Brown? No, that's the Wilson Place. So for maybe we can go check out some of these spots. The warm waters of Flaming Gorge Reservoir. This is related to the cool stream. Turbo brought it up. Turbo? Okay. <laughs> Y'all can continue. Continue your conversation. Uh, well, this person tried to find this treasure, and all they found were a couple of cow skulls. And they said, you know what? For me, the real treasure is the hope that my experience will prevent others from wasting their time and risking their health with Finn's colossal ruse. What was not there? Wah, 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 wah. What? What? Policing the chat. Come on. <clears throat> Tone policing. <laughs> it's between the bath and the toilet. There it is. That's what they wanted to find, but they couldn't find it. There's been. We've got a couple more things for Finn's treasure, and then we really have to get into some weird stuff. Some uh, GoFundMe's <laughs> for finding the treasure. They're looking for 4,750 pounds. David Kirby. He solved Forrest Finn's treasure, but now he needs some money. Do you want to share $500,000 to all who read this? I don't know how many pounds that is, but that's a lot of dough. Come on. Okay. I believe I've solved the poem. I'm just going to cover it. I'm just going to close out the chat here and uh, <laughs> there we go not looking at that just continue with your chatting <laughs> there's a ton of information online as to who Forrest Finn is and what the treasure is but the short version he's an old guy he's a crazy guy why am I here why am I on here if I'm so certain as the location of the hidden treasure worth 202 million dollars why don't I just head straight there and get it? Simply funding is an issue as the treasure is hidden in the Rocky Mountains in the US of A, and I live in the UK. So it's not quite easy as a simple drive. I don't have money. Looking to raise 4,000 pounds, $6,000, will cover the costs, incur travel, and all that good stuff. It'll leave me ample time to contact Forrest Finn after and finalize the last few legal details. Forrest has confirmed the poem to be the clues and all that stuff. I'm 99.99 certain I figured out the poem correctly. 
as everything seems to match exactly. I won't say on here which part, however, based on the wording of the poem and hints Forrest has provided in interviews, I believe part of the poem you cannot figure out from behind a computer desk. You need to phys be physically in the location to find out, but I at least know in the location what to look out for. So you gotta get there and you gotta dig up the damn treasure. Okay, ask your question. I've opened the chat again, and I'm now looking at it. You're on thin ice in there. <laughs> you can ask your question. It's okay. I'm going to move on from Forrest Finn, if this has to do with him, or just treasure in general. We're going to jump to our next treasure topic. This is fun stuff, guys. I'm not trying to be a big meanie. Here. I'm just trying to do a show. Every now and then, you just gotta do a damn show. Okay, so this is the bulk of what I know about treasure hunting it has to do with people who look for treasure signs. And there's a whole lore of of that stuff, treasure signs and whatnot. Let's see, what do I got here? Uh, pretty cool website. Treasure.net, TreasureNet, TreasureNet.com. It's having fun watching the show. Okay, well, I just, <laughs> just said you could ask your question. I guess you didn't hear me because your ears are f plugged up or something. Good Lord. Yes, the chat is on one, but hey, we love, we love everyone throwing the bits for B. Wolf's Billfold and chatting and being inter interacting with the show. It's better than having zero people in here. Come on. That would be a big bummer. What? Alright. I'm not falling for this bit. I will continue with my show. Treasure signs. That's what you need to know. It's what you need to find in order to find this damn treasure. There's a lot, quite a few people out there looking for symbols and trying to find, is this a treasure sign? Ah, what's that? Western thugs. Our ears are fine. Okay, good to know. Ah, that's kind of cool. Here we got a symbol engraving on a trail. Okay, I was trying to click on one that looked like BS, but this is kind of interesting. What do we see here? I'm gonna load that up. That does look like something. A sign or just some carving of some sort. All right, here's the question. Ever had the delicious wings apps and more at Wing Daddy's Sauce House? I have not. I don't eat chicken wings. I don't eat meat, my friend. I'm a pescatarian. But I do know a couple guys over on the Amici's Podcast Network. Our friends Kreb and Jack over there have a podcast called Hot Hot Stuff. And if the wing... Shaq is over in eastern Nebraska. Those two those two fellas will be at it, and they have reviewed it and tasted all those wings. And I've heard that they're moving on to another state. They're heading east, further east, and possibly into Iowa now to check out some wings over there. Kreb and Jack, check it out. Michi's Podcast Network. They may have reviewed that, that uh, wing sauce there. Treasure guy. Yes, we're gonna get the treasure fever. Okay, so that one looks kind. Of, that's kind of cool, actually. That one. Any significance? So you gotta go on this forum and you gotta post your treasure sign to see. All opinions welcome. Probably not anything, but interesting anyway. It's in Colorado, so we know there's treasure there. Got a lot of wings over there. The sleaze balls are can't miss. <laughs> okay. You should hear the ad for Wing Daddies. Good ad. Now I don't wanna. I don't want to uh, upset Amici's here, even though we're not on the network. But that's our number one at a number one wing source for us. But you can check out Kreb and Jack. So, what do we got here? Some treasure signs. We got some holes and some cracks and stuff. So you're gonna go on here, post your picture, and see if you can find anything. I know it's a natural formation, but caught my attention. Looked like a big owl to me. Oh, okay, I see that. It's a big owl. So we're gonna go on here and post your pics, see what people say. 
There's some over here. That could be something. That could be something. It starts to get into some odd territory. Let's see, this is liked by Dog the Treasure Hunter. Might come across some hieroglyphs. People finding buried treasure? Well, that's a good question. Let's see. Let's see what they're finding here. Let's check out the the Redneck Archaeologist Show. This guy's kind of cool. Treasure hunting with signs. He's going to tell us all about it. The Redneck Archaeologist. Redneck archaeologist. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm Jackson Burns. I'm the redneck archaeologist. <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about treasure hunting, symbols, signs, and whatnot. Stay tuned. You might learn something. Stay tuned. <laughs> now, when I'm out looking <laughs> for treasure or archaeological things or unknown <laughs> items or historical things or whatever, Historical and stings. I go back into history. I try to think like those people did back in those days. Those. And then people. I try to imagine myself in that period of time, whatever it may That's be. And then I try to, to imagine what the land looked like and go from there using landmarks such as mountains or strange anomalies on the earth or even large trees or small trees or whatever. Uh, different markings. I look for markings. Look for uh, a marking here on the chain link fence. Anywhere on a tree. <laughs> such as this one. I mean, this is about 30 or 40 years old. Well, this guy's this scholarly. 58. So this <laughs> fence was probably put in around the 60. And, uh, signs of know, treasure. Look for different little markings on the trees. or. The way I, don't, I don't know if that's a great place to look on a tree that looks like it's by a highway or a drainage ditch or something. It's got a damn chain link fence in it. There we go. It's the redneck archaeologist. Made or even limbs pointing like out. Machu Picchu. Rocks stacked, cairns or whatever. <laughs> They're all kind of marks. I mean, you can always look different trees. There's nothing on this one I can find. But a lot of times you'll find trees that might have sweethearts. Oh, uh, sweethearts. Like a heart put on it, inscribed on it somehow or another. Like uh, sweethearts uh, in the neighborhood. This could sweethearts also in the neighborhood. Hidden treasure. Could uh, be hearts buried treasure. Like that are always uh, symbols that there could be a treasure nearby. <laughs> I don't ever think that I'm foolish enough to go... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hearts mean treasures nearby. Okay, so look, we got that. That's one thing to add to our list of things to look out for. Now, I just want to... This part's pretty funny, but I just want to say that I'm not adding any sound effects. I've got the music here going. This is, no, this is just completely un, untouched by me, so let's check well, this thing Well, just wandering out. around, even though I have done that uh, on my own. I also do a lot of research. My own. Like... <laughs> oh, you know, here's a few books. The old Rebel Gold, Art of Egypt, uh, John Wayne's old book, uh, where Wayne's he's treasure book. hunting. And actually, there's a picture of John Wayne on the back of it. Uh, oh, John Wayne actually sponsored the movie actor, actually sponsored several uh, trips all over the world hmm. uh, to find hidden treasure. Oaks Island, he also, he actually sponsored trips there, too. Uh, and this is signed by John Wayne. Oh, wow. You can see. He's a big treasure says, head. Dear Chuck, greed and lust in every look. John Wayne, Duke. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And this is treasure sign symbols, uh, shadows, and sun signs. Hmm, uh, yeah. Some signs there. Uh, local printouts. I'll go to those. There was a funny part here coming up. Here's something from 
Midwestern uh, Epigraphic Journal. And we'll check um, them out in a second. All the time finding cool symbols to look for on rocks, trees, whatever. A uh, handbook of treasure signs and symbols. Uh, mm. Wow. Wow. Oh. Here's a blatant blurb. My book. Blatant blurb. Truth. I wrote this. <laughs> you too can buy this on Amazon.com. So go there now and buy your book. Go on Amazon. Remember. Remember. It's pretty cheap. It's uh, <laughs> pretty cheap. It's 20 bucks, but <laughs> you want it, find it. You might find something unusual or different. In. Go there and buy it. Yeah, that's why I do a lot of research. So, you know, libraries, internet. Libraries? I go and talk to a lot of people, pull up maps. Uh, Gotta have your maps. I find whatever I can. Uh, treasure maps. I'll show you a treasure map right now. Here's a treasure map. This is actually on a, a rock. I'll show you a damn treasure map. Which was dynamited. Oh, oh crap. I'm waiting for a funny part coming up here, but I forgot where it was. I'm just going to keep it rolling. Ah, that was it. Okay, there was just a honk, and that's kind of funny. <laughs> anyway. I thought that was funny. There was a honk in the background. All right. I saw, this, I saw your comment here, Big Jim. I agree. It's fun to laugh at this guy, but he's a looter that is causing irreparable damage to cultural her heritage. Sort of upsetting to learn that there's a cottage industry of treasure hunting literature. That's right. This is kooky stuff. Big burger. <laughs> yes, that's me too. <laughs> yes, a lot of kooks out there doing crazy stuff. Of course, we couldn't do an episode of the Cool Stream without looking at some of these kooks and crazies going out there in the woods and thinking that they're seeing these signs. So, where do they get all this info? Of course, they have their books. They have all their stuff. And they have some legends out there related to this, these dastardly villains, these nasty fellows from way back when, Civil War days, called the Knights of the Golden Circle. <laughs> yes, and correlating Native American rock art with treasure maps. Yeah, so they can't really differentiate whether it's a crack or a natural thing, whether it's some a petroglyph of some sort, or some graffiti, someone's doing a heart or just a symbol, they were bored and they carved into a, a rock, or they put their initials, you know, all that kind of stuff. Or maybe it's treasure. I don't know, it's all kind of lumped into one thing for these people. That's right, the redneck archaeologist is <laughs> problematic. <laughs> Surprise, these guys are crazy. I don't know what they're talking about. I'm not I'm not here trying to say any of this is real or that I believe any of it. Because check this out. These guys are talking about old Confederate gold. Their treasure maps, they're not created like a normal map. These maps are crazy. <sighs> okay, most of the treasure hunters begin with the KGC. Heading to a movie now. Whoa. All right, Risk, thanks for the extra bits there fun at the mill at uh, the film so the I said something else <laughs> the KGC you could see a film about this called National Treasure <laughs> National Treasure with Nicolas Cage look for some treasure it's a treasure hunt hunting for this old confederate gold a single sign is never good for finding treasure at any site but especially when we're when we're dealing with these crazy fools these damn... <laughs> damn it. I really stepped in it saying that stuff. So you gotta go out and interpret the signs and figure out if there's some con confederate gold nearby. So the old conspiracy here is that the confederates hid all their gold and that they were gonna come back someday and unearth the gold and start another big war so that's kind of kind of cool don't really want to get too much into these guys because we all know that you know 
they probably went on to do some some bad stuff. They weren't be bearing gold. They were out terrorizing people. They did terrible, awful things. Apparently, John Wilkes Booth was one of them. They're sort of like a Masonic group. And anyway, people think that they buried lots of gold. So they're out looking for these treasure signs. Try to see if it's the real thing. So, man. John Wilkes Booth. Where do we go from here? Well, let's see what other videos. <laughs> the Redneck Archaeologist. We did Finn's poem, so we'll go out and check out some of these signs, see what we got here. This will look, this is very, very similar to when we've watched some of the Seeing is Believing Mud Fossils videos. This is basically the same thing, except with treasure and not with giants who've been turned to stone and are buried. Mud fossils. What did I say? Oh. Give them a call. <laughs> so, you take a picture and you go and you do a little outline. And you see if you've got... What kind of drawing is this here? See if it's a treasure sign. You can do some drawings all over your... Oh, that was quick. I didn't couldn't see what that was. Let's go back to that. So we have an A, we have a little thing, I don't know what that is, like a little butt or something. And we've got some other stuff. It just went all over this damn tree and marked it all up. Doesn't make any sense to me. What the hell is this? <laughs> Ooh, man. I gotta be on my game. I didn't know everybody's gonna come after me on this stream. <laughs> It's new to me. <laughs> Stop it. Treasures in America. Old symbols reveal the treasure location. What is this? Why did I... Okay, this is kind of funny. All right, this takes me a second when I fire up these videos. Okay, what the hell is this? Oh, yeah, I remember. I watched this. All right. Just keep watching these videos. <laughs> no comment from me. So go out in the woods and check out some old... Treasure symbols. Check out these symbols. And we were following some old symbols down below, and it led us right into this patch of trees. We weren't expecting to find what we found. We found some stuff. So we're going to go through here, and we're going to identify those symbols. What we believe to be a silver sign. Ooh. And uh, the reason you can tell if you get back in there and look at it, it's Watch like a half poison moon. ivy. And so this huh. would be silver. It's silver. And so that's, uh, basically that's what that the means. Is up here in this area is more silver than gold. Hmm. Silver and, and so gold. Probably, and as you can see, the rule of the thumb: you stick your hand in here. Ah, stick your hand every in there. joint of the finger. Figure a hundred years. Huh. So I'm out here to my fourth knuckle. <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you got at least what, 25, 50? Wait, is that how that works? You go from here to here on the fourth joint, you'd be about <laughs> 250 years. There you go. That sounds right. Now, people think you have to core the whole tree. Stick if you're your finger in there. All you need to do is core, core from the bark to the face of that old it is. And that'll give you the age. And that's it. <laughs> you don't need to core into the tree and kill it. Yeah, don't do that. Just that's stick your happen. finger in that tree. This and one's still living, too. Hope there's not a damn bee's nest or a something else. This is real archaeology right here. These aren't dendroglyphs. These are just trees that have some formations on them. And, and heck, yeah. it's because there's treasure. Marker. And so you want to <laughs> news you flash. Go look at this straight on, and then ah. you go straight ahead. Some people think you stab your back to it, but that does that's not how they work. Huh? Yeah. You look at it straight ahead, and then you look at it and go straight ahead. It's, it's literally telling you you're on a trail to lead you to something else, correct? Now, if there was an E, <laughs> uh, three fingers. Uh, it's telling you to go straight ahead. Okay. So it's literally, now to me, when I see this sign, that looks like a cross, all right? That looks like the sign of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When I see that sign, I get on two, I get on two knees and I genuflect before its power and beauty. So thank you, Lord, for showing me 
The treasure. <laughs> These people are stupid. Get it straight ahead and then straight ahead. look at it and go straight ahead. There, there might it's, be a church. It's literally telling you you're on a trail to lead you to something else, correct? Now, if there was an E, the... Okay, so he asked him a question. This is kind of fun. It's, it's telling you to go straight ahead, correct? And he's like, what? No. E. I'm... The capital E figure on top, that would mean reverse direction. So you would turn around and go back the other way. Ah, gotcha. Bah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> now, this bah. Right to the flower. What is this? Raise the lower. Hmm. Now, like I was explaining to some people, this is the road, the trail. This oh, that's kind of cool. These are side canyons. And this little out? cut here would be the mark <laughs> Look at that little guy. in the southeast that's corner neat. of the mountain. If what, wow. where? I don't have it quite looking good here, but these guys saw this symbol, this little guy smoking a pipe, they'd be like, whoa! That's a symbol for treasure, because he's smoking a pipe, and that must mean that he is a treasure guy. Can you get your masters in treasure? Be a treasure yeah, where master. Did I land? That's right this there. guy's a treasure master. He's out here showing him what for. So that's what that's telling you. That tells you, where the, that tells you the tunnel. Oh, I didn't below, see that one before. below the peak. Ah, oh, look at that. Ah. Isn't that cool? Because it's below this. <laughs> yeah, look at that. That is way cool. Yeah, so that's, that's what cool. he's telling you right here. So why isn't this guy finding all the treasure? He knows all the signs. It's a weed guy. <laughs> sticking their hands in the groove. Yes. I don't know what they're talking about. This... I mean, what is all this? This could just be a bear scratched the tree, and that looks like a symbol. Huh. How old do you think that one is, Steve? That's a well, million years old. With the bark overgrown here, uh, it was put in a lot later. I mean, it's probably 100 years or less, maybe 100 years. 100 years. The Mexicans were still coming up yeah. and using mm -hmm. them. And they uh, they were replacing symbols with the symbols that were already here. Yeah, that mm -hmm. makes sense. And that's because they, they were do. dying on, on certain trees, so they would they would move them over. And you know what, Steve, since, since you've shown me this years ago, this is decaying more. This bark is breaking more and more. But you know, this this is for a yeah. Yeah. Dude, This is the that. one that I wanted to have cut down and cut out. Yeah. But it might not make it. You know, yeah. and you still can see the knife marks. Yeah. And I don't think those will ever deteriorate unless no. it's a tree. These guys don't know anything about trees. <laughs> They're stupid. This is pretty good though. Let's check out some owl sign. This is this is kind of cool. You gotta look for the signs, you gotta go out and look for the signs and you'll find some treasures. They are very stupid. <laughs> uh, wait, no. Let's check out owl sign examples. Ah! There's an owl. Hoot hoot. Ah! I call myself a Philip Bibliac. There's an owl head. Oh! Robert Denby. Subscribe with Twitch Prime for three months. The greatest treasure of all is the cool stream. Thanks, pal, for subscribing again to the cool stream. You love it. Man, this has been... Wow, there's an owl carving. This has been a quite a fun episode of the show. Everyone's out. Everyone's going wild. I love it. Here's Doghead. Black dog. Looks like a dog. Yep, I see it. <laughs> dog paw. <laughs> There's the dog paw. So that tells you that the treasure is near. It's near and the white dog. So, did you catch that? Those are some treasure signs we got. Let's see, what do we got? Jesse James buried treasure, so he might have buried some treasure at some point. Got some more redneck archaeologists. Do, 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 do. There's a bunch of stuff in here. <laughs> I'm just kind of scrolling through my YouTube list. Of course, you could go... You can find stuff. You can find some real treasures. This is kind of interesting. Let me just jump over here real quick, and then we'll get back into the weird stuff. The dog... I don't know what the dog means. It's just... We're just finding symbols here. 
could be a, a mud fossil of a dog, you know. The mud fossil giants, they they were fossilized and their pets were there too. So, looking around at treasure stuff, I found an interesting Instagram. That's kind of cool. Check it out. It's not too weird, not too crazy. It's kind of neat. NYC beach finds, sea glass, bottles, middle detecting finds, mainly from Staten Island. So this is a far cry from out in the woods in the Rocky Mountains. This guy's finding stuff on the beach. Old sea glass. It's kind of cool. So we'll just go out and he'll see stuff in the sand. These old bottles, old beer bottles from way back in the day. All the trash that's washed up on shore. Here's a little, little sh shillelagh. <laughs> Boat hook found on the beach. That's pretty cool. He's just finding stuff. Sea glass and little orbs. And this is kind of interesting. Uh, it's kind of sad, but uh, he found this jar that had a photo in it with, he said, uh, a flower. So he posted it and was like, this is kind of weird. I found this thing. And everyone was like, well, I think that's some kind of memorial to someone. You know, he went out and they buried this picture in a jar. You know, sad to find something like that. But it's out there, I suppose. So what he did, he went back. He put a fresh flower in the jar. Put some vinegar in it to, pr to preserve the photo and the flowers. And buried it in its spot. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice, everyone? He found a jar, didn't know what it was. He disturbed a nice memorial of some sort to someone, a loved one. He said, you know what? I'm going to make amends. I'm going to go back. I'm reburying the jar and moving on. That's cool. Nice ending. Got a ring made of sea glass in Hawaii. That's cool. It's pretty neat stuff. So this is some real deal treasure. Not, you know... Just little coins and little doodads and doohickeys and do dilly floppers. <laughs> it's not million dollar treasure, but this is stuff that you could treasure. If you just kind of had it sitting on your shelf and go, hey, I found that. That's cool. Just a little key of some sort, a little scrap of something from history gone by. That's the kind of things you could find out there. So let's get back to some weird crap. All right, that's what we're all about here getting close to the end of the show I think we're doing good it's been a wild one uh, let's check out the form a little bit we'll go check out another website and then we got some blogs to read of course is this is a tree sign carving you can get lost in this damn website I highly recommend checking this out treasurenet.com not treasure.net but treasurenet.com the original treasure hunting website and I'm going here into treasure marks and signs, and that's where I'm getting all this kooky stuff. It's got all the info. I'm talking about trees, so we got to know a lot about. Got to know a lot about trees when you're treasure hunting, and how they grow. And we got something sticking out of the side of this thing. Whoa! What is that some kind of gizmo or gas? <laughs> <laughs> gadget of some sort sticking out of this tree look at all that treasure strange what is that no it is not a tree carving what happened with you drill hole site with the boulders what <laughs> I'm telling you some of, the, some of that talk earlier got my my brain in a strange spot. That's all I'll say about that. That's a blaze tree, okay? And that's what <laughs> that's what you'll get into if you go up in the Rocky Mountains, if you know what I mean. The tree itself and its compass distance position may be important relative to something else, but the carving or pick... <laughs> oh, Lord. I can't do any of this without running into a, a suggestive word. <laughs> I'm losing it. Ah. Won't like oof, oof. the peg won't likely give you anything. Well, it depends on how you do it. Oh, <laughs> hold up! I thought that was kind of funny. I'm gonna stop the show so I can do one of my famous drops. Can't.
can't find it, so we'll just go with that one. Oh, here it is. Oh, I'll see if I can dig one up that I know of. It's more of a sentinel or watcher type thing that is in a vicinity... That is a vicinity marker for something. <laughs> the peg. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I got the scratch pulled up. All right, <clears throat> start over. It's a blaze tree, and I'll say, if you're up in the Rocky Mountains in Colorado, you might find some of that. The tree itself and its compass distance position may be important relative to something else, but the carving or peg... What? Okay. <laughs> do, do, do. Mm. Check out some other ones. You beautiful mark sign on a rock. I need help. Hey, admins. Please help me to unlock the secret symbols. A new beautiful mark sign on a rock. I need help. Well, if it's new, I don't know if it's treasure. If it's a new sign, that means someone must have just went out there and buried some treasure. Hmm. Can't really tell what that is. Too many shadows. That's that would be my response. What the hey? Is this natural or a symbol? And when we did the music episode with Turbo, we learned about symbols. That's right, part of a drum set. What the hey? Gentlemen, can anyone can anyone tell me if this is natural or carved? <laughs> load up <laughs> before I do all that. Let's take a look. And this is a... Is this natural or carved? Oh, crap. What? Hmm. That's all natural, baby. <laughs> okay. Okay, can we find something in here that's not weird? Golden eye markers? Uh... I don't know, maybe check out your Nintendo 64. The stream is too horny. <laughs> Oof, baby. What happened to the Treasure Hunter University website? Not sure, I've been researching signs and symbols in the subform for a few months now. I am now back into 2006 posts. Several times I have seen the aforementioned website, treasurehunteruniversity.com. Recommended. However, the site seems to be defunct. Does anyone know what happened? Is there another site like that around? I tried to use the archives back machine. They set the robot's text file to disallow crawling by anyone. Oh, crap. It's a damn shame. I have a printout paper coop of Treasure Hunter University 101 signs, symbols, and death traps. <laughs> I could take a photocopy and post it up here. Let's get a photocopy scan of that paper coop of the website. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> no. Not again. Ah! Man, what is the deal today? <laughs> Do you clear your cookies? Oh my word. <laughs> Not sure. Oh no, don't like those symbols. Okay, I gotta give a quick turtle? Let me check out the turtle. Turtle? Spotted this on the trail deep in the woods. Doesn't look nat. <laughs> Doesn't look naturals to me. Not natural. Hey there. <laughs> I see a turtle head. <laughs> hey, were you looking at the home of the brown? Alright, with that turtle head. <laughs> Are these the big naturals you're looking for? 
Or is it a turtle head? Looks like a rock. Looks like an ancient sundial converted to a pointer marker. It points two directions. It may now be a corner of a triangle or simply a directional pointer to something in the area like a chamber. I've seen turtle heads <laughs> straight up like that as well. Pretty good, big gem. <laughs> I've seen turtle heads point straight up like that, but I would call it a frog. The frog is the adult stage. It just means you are near the end. Same with an X. So either either you got an adult frog, or you've got an X. One of the two things. Turtle heads. Okay, so this guy mentioned a website that's kind of cool. The Midwestern Epigraphic Society. And they've got all kinds of cool stuff on here. This poster's name is Quinoa. Oh, interesting. The hero member. He's in purgatory. Hmm. Midwestern Epigraphic Society. They go check out all kinds of crazy stuff. I think I found this one through the Illinois Caves. So you know it's a bunch of weird stuff. And they go out and they try to find things and they really try to make it legit. And here we've got the Ogham panels. Ba -boom, boom, ba -boom. And I don't know if it has anything to do with treasure or anything. Virtually used McBain's Gaelic Dictionary for the translation of both panels. The two stem lines in the Bell Smiles panel form a rebus the outline of human lips is defined by reddish color in the stone. In the third and last Ogham panel in this article is shown at left and yields Scotland our great love. Line drawings of the Ogham strokes. Scotland our great love. McFarland's dictionary was used as well as McBain's. Just talking about family guy? Mouth stuff. Ah, I guess so. All this stuff. Ba -bum, da, 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 da. I don't know what any of this stuff is, but there's some Gaelic out here. There's the Stable Star Rock patterns. Kentucky. It's an ancient zodiac site. So you got the petroglyphs, and they got all kinds of stuff out there really know what they're trying to prove, but it's it's not treasure. It's a little bit odd, if you ask me. Here we go. Ancient underwater copper site. Greek letters X and Rho combined into meaning Christos. That's a petroglyph. Okay, so that's not too weird, because that's a, a church religious thing. There's a star. Whoa. What is that? That's freaky. Getting worked up imagining these dorks coming to the archaeological site I'm working at. <clears throat> They're over here in the Midwest in Kentucky. So this is sort of orbiting the Illinois caves type thing. Some weirdos trying to prove. Who knows? Ancient Greeks lived here or something? They just have found certain things. Reporting on it. This stuff. Rebus Ogum. This feathers. Jim? You did this? Being carved in harder sandstone, the circle cross, and what proved to be an ruffled grouse Ogamic Rebus are in much better condition than the previous. Jim translated the Rebus Ogum as feathers. Good job. On the translation there. The Roman characters for Jesus. Oh, that's weird. Ah, what is that? Doo, doo, doo. He thinks the bottom line may be Numidian Tiffanag and trans translate to WTNWLG. You put the gun there for measurement. And that's not a threat. <laughs> Very strange. Streaming ass kicking. <laughs> that's so weird. Gene Harrison. I think that's what it says. Fifth and last in the series was found in Money Cliff. Oh, that 
calls for a cha-ching. During MES visit in March 2008, the group identified a letter previously unidentified. According to Burchell, the script is Germanic rune, but he has no translation at present. Comments? If you got any comments, hit them a line over at inscriptions at midwesternepigraphic.org. This guy lives in Tucson. Okay, this is freaky weird. We'll let's read this, and then we're going to jump over to this blog, and then we're going to end the show. Did I leave my gun in the pick? Do, do, do. <laughs> Oh no, what? <clears throat> My name is Bill Riley and I live in Tucson. I'm an amateur archaeologist as a hobby and I would like to share with you what I believe to be discoveries of sunlight made images from rocks manipulated for the construction of these images. Alright, that makes sense. Hey, this guy's me. Midwestern epigraphic. Hey, that's you. These images are only seen at certain times of the day at a certain times of year. The images are meant to convey a message to the reader in symbolic terms for the location of entrances to vaults and mines. <laughs> uh, what I would like for you to do is put me in touch with someone that may be able to help me unlock the way to view and read these images and unlock the mystery of the system. weirdos. The example at left is a horse and harness and is pictured in the photo at the right along with other shadow examples. Click photos to enlarge. Let's go check them out. Horse symbol? Heart and other stacked symbols. There's the horse symbol. Main pointer. It's kind of like my mouse cursor here and then you got the crescent moon and triangle, triangle pointer. That's interesting. But it only appears at certain times of the day. So at this point now, we're beyond looking. Oh crap, what are we talking about here? A police officer will come with his gun and tell me I need to hire him for protection. Oh crap, that sounds dicey. <clears throat> Careful out there. Um, so at this point, these folks here are looking at shadows of rocks. We've gone beyond just, I mean, I guess most of them are like that, but beyond just carvings, but now it's shadows. Which means if, if it's true, if it really is treasure and someone put a rock to make a shadow, let's say the wind blows the next day, knocks the rock over, the shadow is ruined, you'll never find the damn treasure. It seems like a bad way to give signs and stuff. Shadows are only there at a certain time. After I asked Bill if he has found the human altered stones that are casting the shadows, he replied that I can follow the secretly marked trails to the sunlight symbol sites which contain stacked symbols or complete numerical signs. It's taken me about seven years to do it though. Hello again Jim and everyone else, here's some maps. Those are cool. That's kind of cool. Alright, there's a lot of kooky stuff out there on these treasure guys. But if you want to do treasure, you're going to want to check out this blog, the Hoot, the Hoot Owl Tree. And this is the post. This is a while back, but the Hoot Owl Tree gives you some good advice if you're trying to figure out if you want to be a treasure hunter. And this is our last bit here on the show. Treasure hunters, beware. The new Obama healthcare law may affect you. Okay, you've worked your tail off for 20 years to discover the location of a buried treasure. During those years, the money you spent for research, equipment, travel, lodging, permits, and lawyers add up to thousands of dollars and countless hours of hard work. Remember, you paid income tax on that money when you earned it. Still, for all those years, you have not been allowed to deduct your treasure hunting expenses on your income tax forms because the IRS claims your treasure hunting is a hobby. What? Damn it, Obama. But when a cash is found, guess who's there with their handout to collect all the tax they can if any treasure is sold? Unless you really believe all you read on the internet forums, you should know that even a very successful treasure hunter doesn't dig up a treasure every year. But when treasure is found, some or all is sold to pay back mama for all the years she worked for nothing while on the hunt. Here, 
We are talking about full time. No nine to five jobs, treasure hunters. Any ex any excess is disposed of secretly, and usually the proceeds used to buy new technology and equipment to continue treasure hunting. So, is it any wonder that real treasure hunters don't brag publicly about their work? Some treasure forum jockeys gripe constantly about lack of evidence for any treasure being found. A couple of those berate hard-working treasure hunters because they won't prove their satisfaction treasure is found. The same people try to try their best to insult or discredit knowledgeable treasure hunters, hoping their tactics will bring a response from which they may learn something. It seems those most vocal and demanding proof of treasure finds never stop to think that someone else's success or failure is totally none of their business. Soon, the pain in the arse of the forum jockeys demanding to know who found what, when, where, and how will be the least of any treasure hunters, wor treasure hunters' worries. After the first of the year, treasure finds which are sold will be revealed on a treasure hunter's income tax return. Do some research into this damn health care bill. Our freedoms are being trampled. Jim, you're going to like this. Our God-given freedoms are being systematically trampled upon. We're, we're going to need most of our treasure for the reconstituting... <laughs> oh, no! Of the Republic. What? I believe I'll be able to contribute at least 100 tons <laughs> of treasure. But not until the appointed time. Oh, my God. So he's kind of gone off the rails. I'm going to learn about Obamacare. And he's got another post. This will be our last one. I'll see if I can skim this. I feel like there's one. You want to be a money hunter. Bum, 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 bum. Treasure consulting. Well, maybe I don't have that one. I don't think the hoot owl tree has been posting for a long time. Need the treasures to establish the ethno state. And, and that goes back to the old Golden Circle Knights. These freaks back in the day posted their treasure. The, the so the conspiracy goes, they posted their treasure. They posted their treasure. They hid their treasure so that they could create some kind of uprising later on. And that's the old conspiracy stuff. That's the conspiracy side of it. So that's kind of what he's referring to. But anyway, that's the old hoot owl tree. Check him out. He's an old timer. The Horse of God. This is some weird stuff. Ugh, I don't want to read that. Theft of equipment. Anyway, it's wild stuff over in Treasure Hunters. We'll check it out some other time. We'll come back to it. Thanks for watching the damn show. Hope it was fun for you. Hope you enjoyed the show. I had a lot of fun. Didn't watch as many videos. I will go back and watch Geek Seeks Gold documentary of Forrest Finn. I recommend everyone watch that. Geek Seeks Gold. <laughs> that was pretty funny. I think I'll be checking him out. Yeah, it's pretty strange stuff. The Hoot Owl Tree, but definitely check out Treasure Treasure Net. So it's got some good stuff. <laughs> okay. So, it's been a fun show. Next week I'll be out, but I have pre-recorded show which will be airing at a normal time 4 p.m central on saturday it's going to be fun it's a little secret it's a little bit different than some of the ones we've done and i won't have any of that classic interaction going on with the chat it's just me just rambling on and it's a lot of fun so check it out it's made me feel some unusual things <laughs> these old symbols and signs it's just crazy stuff we learned some about treasure we had a lot of fun but the treasure in the end was the the friends we made along the way. And thanks to all the bit donators, we're going to see your names in the credits, which is cool. We got Rurisk, Western Thug, Jay Chiz, Manderson Poff, Beer Horse. Thanks for all the people resubscribing. Let's see if I can give a shout out. The names will be in the credits. We'll give a live shout out as well. 
Robert Denby, Big Jim for the resubs. That was cool. No interaction with the chat. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, because I pre-recorded it. So that'll be next week. Check it out. It's a lot of fun. Thanks for watching the show. We're going to jump over and do the credits now. It's going to be, be a good time. Thanks for watching, everybody. trying to crack all the pieces, trying to crack everything together, analyzing maps, analyzing satellite imagery, 